So when I was in fourth grade, I was four feet tall. I was 144 pounds. And my doctor told me that I was morbidly obese. And it was a very, like, self-image wrecking thing for me because it was he used language that made it seem like I needed to change as opposed to just assessing where I was. Is this where we are today? Have young people been so gaslit about health that they believe it's perfectly fine to be an obese nine-year-old? Do they not teach biology or health class in school anymore? Also, what kind of parent allows their nine-year-old to gain that much weight? Why is this guy offended that his doctor did what a doctor is supposed to do and told him to take care of his health? So many questions. Anyway, this is Jubilee's Odd One Out, which is a show that I never thought I would have a reason to cover, other than the one with that really annoying vegan girl. But everyone has already reacted to that one, so there's no point. Odd One Out is a show where Jubilee gets a group of people, picks a topic, and has one faker who does not fit into that group. In this episode, everyone is blindfolded and our six contestants have to figure out which one of them is not obese. The game works in a series of rounds. If the plus size people catch the faker, then the remaining players split the money. If they get it wrong, the faker gets all the money. Usually when people react to these episodes, the audience can kind of play along, but since you can already tell who the liar is just by looking, instead of playing a game, we're going to watch a bunch of people gaslight themselves and the audience about the complications that come along with not taking care of your diet. Let's go to round one. Oh, yeah. Where do you guys buy your jeans from? Um, I actually did just get a pair from Old Navy like a couple weeks ago, and I love it, but it's a little big in the waist, so I do have to take it in. I'm probably going to tailor it though, So, uh, but I do love Old Navy's jeans. I'm still in the mentality when I was like 16, 17, and I could fit in a medium. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, oh, this I can't go to the same stores. Like, right. I can't go to a mall and buy clothes anymore. Um, okay. I'm probably quite a bit older than you, and I'm still the same pants size that I was at 17. Why is her take like, well, I'm 25, I'm basically a senior citizen now, and I can't do the things I used to do? We are so old. So old. It's like she's completely given up on life before it's even started. And one thing that is immediately noticeable when these obese people talk about their lives is just how many inconveniences they put themselves through instead of making a change. For example, having to tailor clothes is a pretty big topic of discussion in round one. I just thrift most of my clothing and like I have a tailor for my pants anyway. Shout like out back to the in tailors. Yeah, a hundred percent. Especially when I'm back home, uh, I'm 15 minutes outside of New York City, so I usually just commute in there. There's this one thrift store I don't know if anybody's been called the L Train, and like that is really good for carrying bigger sizes. Back in my actual hometown, I can go to my tailor very easily. It's like a five minute drive from my house. Okay. So I thrift probably ninety percent of my clothing, Sorry. cheaper, saves energy and like this guy already outed himself. I went to New York last year and pretty much no one is obese there because you have to walk everywhere. As for the tailoring, sometimes tailoring is necessary if you're trying to get the best fit on a piece of clothing or if your natural body shape while thin deviates from most people. But the fact that tailoring clothes just to get a basic fit was such a major topic of discussion in round one is pretty bad. Also, this guy Derek is really something else. Listen to his interview that Jubilee showed right at the start almost as a way of calming down the fat acceptance hate mobs. The reason that I chose to do this was mainly because it meant a lot to me to share the idea of like, as you transition away from being in a bigger body to potentially being in a skinnier body, that is not something that like makes you harder working or better at like achieving some sort of goal than the other person or another person that you may see in a plus size body. What? Where did they find this guy? I can't believe he said that unironically. Derek is someone who used to be obese and is now thin but it absolutely does mean you're harder working and more able to achieve a long-term goal than someone who is morbidly obese. In fact, if you're a guy who spent two years going from 300 pounds to 165 pounds, then I would say that not only are you more capable of achieving long-term goals than the average obese person, but you're also more capable of achieving long-term goals than the average person. And going into it, I like promised myself I wasn't going to tell any lies. I was going to be very truthful and speak on every kind of experience that I had had leading up to today. I wanted to make sure that what I was saying was stuff that I lived through, I think putting on a character would be disrespectful to the other people that were here today. I've watched a lot of these over the years and none of the fakers had to give a speech about how they felt guilty for playing the game. Now, another thing that is very noticeable in this video is how much the people in this contest are trying to lump plus size people in with people who faced actual discrimination for traits about themselves they cannot change. I think putting on a character would be disrespectful to the other people that were here today. Disrespectful? He's literally acting like pretending to be obese to win a few bucks is like putting on blackface. Or he's acting like being overweight puts you in a minority group. Uh, newsflash, most people in America are overweight or obese, meaning that they're the majority group and thin and healthy people are in the minority. Since woke logic is always based on which group has more people, it should be considered offensive for you to claim that overweight people are oppressed. Alright, that concludes round one, the most boring part of the game. 
Let's see who got voted off and gets around two. Oh, man. <clears throat> oh, wow. Speaking of aesthetics, because I'm very into that topic, these aren't very good smiles. For a good smile, you want more of a U-shape, and you want to incorporate your eyes into the smile. These ones are very horizontal, and that's why they don't look good. Technically, the guy on the left, Bradley, has the best one. The good news is that you can retrain that, so you don't look like crap when you take photos. I'm not the best at this, so I don't feel qualified to teach it, but you can watch this video here if you want to learn more. Anyway, I thought that was an important tangent, because in this era, knowing how to take good photos will get you ahead. Let's hear some woke stuff. As a woman in a plus size theater community, it's like, I always got the funny roles or the really unattractive roles. And I'm like, I'm big, that doesn't mean I'm hilarious. Like, Girl, we could talk about this forever. Yeah, so that that's yeah. super powerful because performing and becoming into yourself, you either have to be overly confident and fake it till you make it or it will tear you down. Well, as a blah, 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 immediately when I hear someone say the words as a blank, my eyes roll over because every time a person does that, they're doing it not as a qualifier of their opinion, but instead, they're listing off how you should see them as oppressed and therefore want you to agree with them, or you're a bad person who is invalidating their experience. It's never as an engineer or as a neuroscientist or anything that would better qualify the opinion they are giving. Well, personally, as someone who is successful in the entertainment business, I have to say that the reason this plus-sized person is being typecast into the same role is because that's how people make money in entertainment. Did you ever notice how most of the successful actors play the same characters over and over? Very few of them have range like Johnny Depp or Heath Ledger and can play people who are entirely different from themselves. Also, if she doesn't like her typecast, then she can lose weight. Welcome to Hollywood. Actors have to change their body shape to get jobs all the time. How do we all identify? Do we identify, like, what do we use um, to label ourselves if you have one? P H A T. Thank you. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I have a weird feeling about that one for some reason. That was a pretty millennial style reference for someone who looks like a Zoomer. I haven't heard P H A T in like 10 years. However, it doesn't matter how you identify yourself here because the reason you said as a plus size woman is to note your oppression points and the reason you get points for that is because you perceive that other people think of you negatively because you're obese. Changing the language is not going to change how people perceive you, so anything said during this segment is nonsense. I'll yeah. say fat and then people will be like, oh my god, fat! And then I'll be like, it's not inherently a bad oh, no. word, it's, it's an adjective. It's also a noun. The noun form is the one that's not inherently bad. The adjective form usually comes with a negative connotation. That's why you guys care, and saying that you don't doesn't make it so. I That's the thing. The no, time. but it is kind of taboo because I was like, oh, yeah, I'm fat. Don't say that. You're beautiful. I am gorgeous, I but I am fat. I didn't say yeah. I was ugly. Yeah. It's, oh, my God, yeah, bro. I'm sorry. I misspoke. I People like, treat it like it's right, taboo, right? That, that's so the it's, issue, really. It's two yeah. truths. But that's not true, and the reason it's not attractive is because it's unhealthy. I think if you get into the anatomy and physiology of things, you'll find that a lot of stuff that we perceive as unattractive are also unhealthy, like a forward-leaning head. That will cause things like carpal tunnel syndrome or TMJ. Bad breath can be a sign of poor dental health or a candida overgrowth. Mouth breathing likely causes you to get sick more because your nose filters air whereas your mouth doesn't. We are also finding out that mouth breathing may cause more cavities, crooked teeth, and poor nasal pathway development. All of these are things that people perceive as physically unattractive. Physical attractiveness, especially when it comes to obesity, is very related to health. But really, the most unhealthy thing that these people are doing is saying that they are fine the way they are or that they are all these great things without having done any actual work. It's such an unhealthy message to send to people. We're all human. None of us are perfect. Um, it's teaching people that you shouldn't need to strive to improve yourself. You shouldn't need to struggle. And when you come across uh, challenges or adversity, the rest of the world just needs to accept that you're amazing the way you are. Uh, imagine if people took that to heart and tried to take that lesson out into the world and apply it to their lives. It would be disastrous for them. They would just get hit with like failure after failure. Yes, it's not a coincidence that when I research the people in my videos with these ideas, that pretty much none of them are successful. That's why I call these ideas psychological poison. Being fat or plus size does not mean that we're not active, that we're not nice people, that we're not worthy, like worthy. It really sucks when people treat you differently because you're a size 18 rather than a size 2 or 4. 
Well, I don't think that anyone would say that being obese means you're unkind or you're unworthy. But I do think that these people, and this person in particular, doesn't think she's worthy or worthwhile. Because if she did, then she wouldn't shovel a ton of food down her throat to the extent that it harms her health and limits her relationship options. And stop the gaslighting. Yes, obesity is limiting your options. You can say you're kind and have a good personality. That's great. But it's not the only thing that matters, and that occurs in other fields as well. When you buy products, you don't just buy for the utility of the product or the personality of the product. You also buy products based on how they look. You want something that has useful functions that also looks good. The example I like to use a lot is with these products here. On the left, we have the OSSC, and on the right, we have the RetroTank 5X. These products essentially do the exact same thing. They allow you to upscale a modified retro console into HD. The problem is that the OSSC looks like a blocky piece of crap, whereas the RetroTank 5X has a very nice, simple, encapsulated design with ports that don't create a huge mess of wires when everything is plugged in. The OSSC has the utility, but it doesn't look good, and therefore it is an inferior product, and I imagine that it sells less units. Another example I like to use is this cake that I make for parties. Not only do people say it visually looks good, but it's also a great tasting cake. It has function and a desirable appearance. But as much as these big companies lie to you by saying appearance doesn't matter, you'd be shocked at the millions upon millions of dollars they spend making sure their products look good. You wouldn't use products like YouTube if they look like crap. This is why I say things like how you smile matters. That's why eating right matters. That's why going to the gym matters. A good product has to have utility and it has to be aesthetically appealing. Anyway, that's the end of round two. And believe it or not, they continue to say ridiculous stuff and undermine people who actually try hard to achieve their goals in round three as well. I think the, the odd one out is probably somebody who lived as a fat person, be, yeah. but yeah. lost the weight. But usually a lot of the times people that do grow up fat or, you know, go through weight loss journey, they end up being more fat phobic. Um, that's not in all cases. It's not in all cases, yeah. but it, like it does happen a lot. Uh, yeah, it's because they went through the struggle, achieved the outcome they wanted. And you know what they found out? They probably found out that simply putting your nose to the grindstone and doing the work is actually much, much easier than suffering the consequences that you put yourself through by being overweight. They found out that it's not as impossible as the complainers make it seem. Those people are just making excuses. And you know what I've noticed throughout this whole episode, and we're only halfway through, so there's still a lot more of this to come. Literally no one, literally no one, has said anything positive about being fat. It's all negative. I can't buy the clothes I want. I can't shop where I want to shop. I have to get all my clothes tailored. I get cast in roles that I don't want. People don't find me attractive. People assume negative things about me. Now, I didn't show this, but the faker Derek said that he had to quit the math team when he was a kid because he was too overweight to fit into the team vest and he was embarrassed. Compare that to this Jubilee video of girls who are rating their strength where they only have positive things to say about being thin and in shape. I feel like everyone should lift. It's such a great foundation. You're gonna feel good about yourself. You're gonna meet great people at the gym. And also it's nice to see what your body's capable of doing. Yeah, weightlifting rocks. So tell me, if you only attribute negative things to your condition, then how are you fat with a pH? How is this desirable? From what you described, being obese sounds horrible and you haven't even gotten to the real fun part of obesity, which starts in your 30s and 40s when you have to take 100 different medications because you have joint pain type 2 diabetes, and heart disease. All of this is way more work and way more suffering than just losing the weight. But the problem is that these people don't want to go out of their comfort zone and are too lazy to learn how to change their behaviors. But don't take my word for it. Turning in on that, like I really do think that in my personal experience, people that go from being in a bigger body into like becoming skinny feel some sort of resentment, especially because I think they tie achievement to what they've done for some yeah. reason. Like there's this, mm -hmm. there's this very big principle of like, look at what I've done. And they very, yeah. they push this like American dream esque mentality of Honestly. like, yeah, like genuinely, exactly. like I worked hard and I did this. And it's like, well, not everybody and, wants to yeah, do that. And like, that's fine. Like, that's I like how he just admitted that they are lazy and basically everyone agreed. What's funny is what is said next by this person here. Like, That's fine. If yeah. you want to lose weight, do that. But you don't need to like project that onto everyone else. The best part of this is that she says that people are projecting. And then two minutes later, she said that she always wanted to be thin. I think yeah. it's it's difficult, too, because, um, you know, I grew up fat. I've been fat my entire life. And I've always envied in a way like the I like I've always wondered what it would be like to live in a thin body and how yeah, people treat you sure. differently. Like I've always I've, dream I've dreamt about it. I love how these people accidentally tell on themselves if you can get them to speak long enough. Joe Rogan says that it's one of the benefits of his podcast, and it's probably why certain people won't come on. It's hard to tell a lie for three hours straight. Good liars will say as little as possible. And this person, V, isn't the only one who got caught. 
Remember how this girl, Marcel, said that obese people are active? Being fat or plus size does not mean that we're not active. Well, here's her saying that she gained a lot of weight because she wasn't active. So I moved to the U.S. when I was 16, and I started getting weight. You know, the life here is different. Um, I wasn't as active. I wasn't doing sports anymore. And then I was on birth control. So for me, it was hormonal imbalance that made me gain a lot of weight. Gee, imagine that. Two plus two equals four. Finally, someone admitting that the sky is blue and not trying to say it's pink. She still had to blame birth control, though. Listen, birth control has its issues, and it might cause you to gain like 10 to 20 pounds, but it's not causing you to gain like 100 pounds. That's an eating disorder doing that. But you see, these people all know the answer. They know the answer is to eat less and move more. She said she gained weight because she wasn't doing that. The sad thing is that because this is an addiction and because a ton of people in media are lying to them and saying that they are fine, they are really only going to make a change if something extremely bad happens to them. I'm a bulimia survivor. Um, I was bulimic for about eight years. And I also played volleyball and it was in, like in theater and stuff like that. And the only reason I stopped throwing up and binging and purging is because I was losing my voice. Oh. And I love to sing. Mm. And I got nodes. No, oh, no, that's oh, the worst. Shit. Oh, oh my God. I went from... Um, Mezzo soprano yes. to mezzo alto. But yeah, like if, if it didn't affect my voice, I don't know if I would have stopped. Stop. Yep, that's how it is. This person had an eating disorder and almost destroying her voice is what caused her to change. Well, she still has an eating disorder, but you get the point. Addicts have to suffer negative consequences before they'll change. And the worst thing people could do to an addict is to prevent them from experiencing a negative consequence of their behavior. Nothing positive will convince them. They have to experience negativity and that point is communicated here. Honestly, dating, um, I've, m I've met many guys who were like, I used to be big, so I understand that being smaller is more desirable. And it's just like this conversation just rubs me the wrong way because yeah, I'm, I've been met with so many people who think like that. Yeah. And like the worst person I dated was very fat phobic and they used to be bigger and they lost weight. And they were like shaming me about my body, being like, you know, Red we'd have better sex if you were smaller oh, and all that God. shit. No. Like, oh my God. No, this... and it's... See, she doesn't care about the positives. And based on what these people say is fat phobia, she describes what I personally think was probably more so concern as abuse. Her ex was right, though. I don't know why no one talks about this, but being more in shape makes sex way more fun. Not only that, but from the perspective of her past relationship, it is incredibly hard to move someone around who weighs that much, and no one wants to be with someone who is instantly out of breath the second they start moving. Just keep adding this stuff to the list of all the things that suck more than actually making an effort to lose weight. So that's pretty much everything interesting that happens during the game. If you've watched this series before, then you might have realized that I already spoiled the ending in the intro clip by showing them in a red light, which means the faker won. Once they realize this, all hell breaks loose and the apologizing begins. On the count of three, everyone can take off their blindfolds. One, two, three. I f knew it. I knew it. I f knew wow. it. I told a heartfelt story about dating wow. someone fat phobic. You guys voted me. Okay, can we talk about a million and one reasons why it was Derek? Okay, the only one that got me was like the theater. Like I really could relate with that. So I Same. obviously know that no, you were like you I, really were. That's, that's right. That's I think flag. that was true. That, it, it that, was. No, it was it true. Was that's promise, that's, that's an important thing. Was Nothing. Yeah. Away was there is that. not a single. Yeah. yeah. What? Why is he like apologetic? The point of the game is to lie and pretend that you're something you're not. Did the fake vegan have to apologize in the vegan episode? No. Honestly, if they're going to get all offended, then they shouldn't have played the game. They are doing the exact thing that is wrong with Hollywood. We, the viewers, just want to watch people play a game. Meanwhile, the producers are trying to introduce some dumb political message that we don't care about at the expense of the game. I'm sorry to anybody that shared something personal and then, like, because of this, feels like they were lied to or abused. Like, I really, no. I, I came into the game with no. the idea of just having fun and I promised myself, like, I'm not going to lie a single time that when I speak. It's like, I didn't want to, like, come in here and build a character. The point of the game is literally to lie. This is what they signed up for. I swear to God, if anyone's lying, oh my God, I'm so pissed. <laughs> After this, they show Derek, the thin guy, going on some really dumb tirade. I hope that in watching this video, somebody can learn that the horrible stereotype that they have of plus-sized people, whether that be that they're lazy or sluggish or they don't eat right or they're not healthy. Not lazy? Bro, you called them lazy multiple times during the game. Do you not remember that? 
Well, I was going to throw up air quotes, but we all have blindfolds on. <laughs> yeah. uh, because they, like, put in the work, yeah. that part being uh, air quotes, and, like, became yeah. uh, into a skinnier body. Yeah. All of a sudden, there's this idea, Wait, like, yeah. you aren't working as well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Everybody, but again, not everybody yeah. wants to yeah. work Eat. that hard. Exactly. Quote, unquote. Also, you can't be morbidly obese and have healthy eating patterns because overeating is disordered eating and therefore unhealthy. Even if they eat the most organic Whole Foods farmer's market stuff you can find. There are people that are plus size that are faster than you. There are people that are plus size that are in better conditions than the average human being. Challenge accepted. They all want to say they're physically fit and healthy, and by stating things that are obvious, I'm stereotyping and acting bigoted. Okay, what's the prize money in odd one out? A thousand dollars? Fine. I challenge any of the obese people in this game, as long as they are still obese, to a hundred meter dash, and if they can beat me, I will give them a thousand dollars. So anyone but Derek can claim the prize. I'm not even that fast, so you actually have a chance to win. And I'm completely serious. If you were in the video, then contact my agent with the email on my about page on my YouTube channel, and we'll set this up, film it, and if you win, you get the money. Let's smash those oppressive stereotypes. Anyway, just for some positivity, let's end this with someone who has a take that is not insane. I couldn't tell like how I had an, an eating disorder when I was younger and how I overcame that. And then I slowly started drifting back to it. And I'm trying to lose weight now in a more healthy manner. So I wish I could have told that story to the group. Yes, thank you for calling it disordered eating because that's what it is. And thank you for continuing to make an effort to change instead of quitting and gaslighting by saying you're healthy like the fat acceptance people do. All the people who are gaslighting and not referring to this as a disorder are really doing a disservice to the people whose lives are being ruined by the inability to control their behavior. Like I said earlier, the consequences of being obese are much worse than the inconvenience of losing weight. If you actually put in the work to exercise, eat less, and do some YouTube research to make sure you're using the most effective techniques, then you'll see that it's really not as hard as your fantasy makes it out to be. Now every time I talk about obesity, I'll usually throw in a little weight loss tip. Here's one that I learned from weightlifting. Sleep is actually incredibly important for fat loss. It's been researched. Check out this Jeff Nippard video here. You want to get 7-8 to eight hours of sleep per night if you want optimal fat loss. Also, just from a practical standpoint, the more stressed you are from not sleeping, the more likely you are to overeat or eat convenience foods instead of cooking your own meals. Outside of that, as I always say, weight loss is about psychology, not so much about diet and exercise. You need to put yourself in the correct mental space to motivate yourself to eat properly and exercise properly. You aren't going to do that if you're too stressed. One thing I like to do to reduce stress is to reduce the number of problems that I have. If you have 50 problems, life sucks, but it sucks less if you reduce it to 49 problems. And instead of sitting around and letting stuff overcome you, how about you write out a list of problems that you currently have the ability to solve and start knocking them out. It can be an easy one, like maybe you have $500 of credit card debt. Work a couple of extra shifts and knock it out. Or maybe it's something more mid to long term like $10,000 of debt that you work to solve over a while. Whatever the actual thing is, I'm sure you can list out some solvable problems and you can start making your life suck less by fixing them and crossing them off the list. And what you'll find is that after you've been doing that for a while, is that the bigger problems that you thought you couldn't solve actually become more manageable. Maybe you have trouble losing 100 pounds because there are five things in your life that are making that goal more stressful to achieve. Knock those out first, and then turn your focus towards losing weight. The psychological game is how you achieve this goal, and the reason people are failing is because they're focusing their energy in the wrong direction. You can pretty easily determine if that's you by asking yourself, did this thing get me the result I wanted? If the answer is no, then try a different strategy. Anyway, thanks for watching, follow me on Twitter, and I'll see you in the next video.